Every developer's dream job is to get a six to seven figure salary at a big tech company. And I went from a self-taught developer to landing a job at Microsoft and today I'm gonna to break down exactly how I landed that job and how much they paid me. Now, this is meant to be a raw video. I don't have a script. I'm just gonna tell you my story and essentially how I did this, sprinkle some tips along the way. And then of course, I'm gonna get into all the finances, all of the numbers, but it's not that useful for me just to brag about the high salary. You guys already know it's gonna be a lot of money. It's more useful if I tell you exactly how I actually achieved that. So let's get right into it. Now, the job that I got at Microsoft was an internship position. I actually received multiple offers from Microsoft at the time that I worked there and even after I left asking me essentially to come back. So I have the exact emails, the exact offers, the exact compensation. I'm gonna show you all of it. I'm gonna share my screen and walk through it at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. Now, in terms of some more details, again, internship position, this was when I was 19 years old. I was currently in a computer science degree. Later, I ended up dropping out of that, but that had little to no impact on me essentially getting this job. Quick stats, I had four interviews in total. The first interview I had was an online screening round, and then the three after that were technical in-person rounds in Redmond, Washington. Important note, I lived in Canada. I'm a Canadian citizen, I don't live there anymore, but I used to live in Canada in Ottawa at the time where I was going to school. And they actually flew me from Ottawa to Seattle slash Redmond, where the headquarters are, where I did the interviews. So there's something interesting there before I even got the job there, already spending thousands of dollars just to interview me to see if I would potentially be a fit. Okay, now let's talk about how I got the interview. So a lot of people, you know, they wanna work in big tech, but they never even get an opportunity. They never get an interview. And what I always say is that it's kind of like you need to match preparation with a little bit of luck, right? When that opportunity comes up and you need a little bit of luck to get into a big tech company. There are ways you can be precise about it. You can drastically increase your odds, but at the end of the day, it's not guaranteed. And there is that little bit of luck factor. You can increase your luck as much as possible, but no one can 100% guaranteed say, you know, if you apply to this company, you're going to get a call back. So the way that almost everybody gets jobs in big tech companies, and this applies to me as well, is through referrals. We'll talk about what to do if you don't have a referral in a second, but essentially you need to kind of know someone at the company, have networked with them on LinkedIn or something, talked with them maybe face-to-face -face or over a few emails, have some kind of little connection and just ask for a referral. People at these companies are incentivized to refer you because if you get referred and then you get hired from that referral, that person actually gets a good amount of money. In some cases, it's like thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, depending on the role. So people want to refer you, but they don't just want to refer a bunch of random people because they only have a few referrals that they can use. So you need to essentially prove you're valuable to someone, get the referral, then you apply with the referral, which is effectively what I did, and then you will get called in for an interview. Almost certainly, assuming that you have you know, a good resume, good projects, all of that kind of stuff. So my story is a little bit weird. Essentially at the time I had a, a YouTube channel, right? I have a large YouTube channel right now. It's called Tech with Tim. I still had that channel. It was significantly smaller and I was doing a sponsorship deal with Microsoft. Very small deal, nothing crazy, just promoting some like kind of random education platform they had. Now, while I was doing that, I was in school, I was 19 years old. I was still looking for an internship at the time. I hadn't gotten any luck from my university degree, <laughs> hadn't prepared me very well. And I essentially asked after the uh, sponsorship, I sent an email to the guy who was I was coordinating with. And I said, hey, by the way, I know this is kind of random. I'm looking for an internship. Does Microsoft have any opportunities? Can you connect me with anyone? And they weren't planning on hiring me. That's not why they reached out to me for the deal. It was purely like promote this thing on YouTube. That was like the extent of our relationship. And then because I emailed him, he said, you know what? I'm not sure, but let me just connect you to this person. Boom, shot me over to some random email. And then that person said, hey, let me connect to this other person. And then all of a sudden I'm talking with like the university recruiting, some girl from university recruiting. She says, hey, like I fought for me your resume. Okay, I send her my like pretty shitty resume at the time. She says, all right, let's go on like a quick, like a, you know, 25 minute call. Um, you know, we can make sure you're a good fit. So we hop on the call. We talk through some of the resume, talk about the opportunity, et cetera. And then what she did was uh, gave me a quick technical question. So said, hey, can you answer this like simple Python question? I was able to answer it and then I was moved to the next round. Okay, so that's my story. Like, that's how I got the referral. That's how I eventually got to the interview process. Now, for you, in order to get the referral, again, it comes out to networking, trying to meet people in those companies, and more importantly, just getting people to actually look at your resume. You might say, okay, Tim, well, that's unfair, right? Like, you had this YouTube channel. People were reaching out to you. But actually, I can tell you from experience, I just worked with three people inside of my dev launch program and was able to land them jobs at Microsoft, that's the first one, Oracle, and Amazon. Now, these are not crazy exceptional developers. Sure, they're good. They have a good profile, good resume. We worked with them, tuned all of those things up. And we were able to do that through referrals, but also through cold applying. So you can still get a job through cold applying. But like I say, 
you have to have everything absolutely top notch and you need to have a little bit of luck, which just fortunately with these people, we were able to get, they got that opportunity. And then we took advantage of the opportunity, which I'm going to talk about next. And just quick side note here, one of the easiest ways to increase your luck, essentially, when you apply to these companies is to have a production deployed application on your resume. One of the number one things these companies screen for is people that are like overachievers. And the way that they can determine that is if you've actually pushed something out into production that other people use, especially at a more junior or intern level, like if you're still in university or something, that is a huge signal to them that you're doing something like meaningful that you might be like the next, you know, startup founder or something like that. And they want you to work for your, for that company where they can essentially bring you in, give you the golden handcuffs, and then you can just do good work for them rather than starting your own thing. So anyone I know that had an app with like a thousand users or had like a bunch of people using it from university or actually deployed something out, well, it seems daunting. They pretty much guaranteed that they got interviews at all of these big tech companies. And then once you get a job at one of them, it's much easier to get interviews at others because they all cross screen and it'll, they'll look for in their systems. Like, have you worked at Meta? Have you worked at Amazon? Have you worked at Microsoft? If you have, then they'll want to bring you in and hire you. And that's one of the kind of life changing things when you get one of these jobs, not just the salaries, which for the people that I just worked with, they were making anywhere from like 180 to like $250,000 per year, even at entry level. It's more that resume stamp and that instant credibility. Anyways, that's kind of how you get in the door, right? You either get a little bit lucky but by doing essentially the best process you can cold applying it does work, especially at companies like Amazon that actually bring in a lot of people, or you have a referral from a small connection that you met. And again, same thing, everything needs to be up to speed in terms of the resume portfolio, et cetera. Now it comes to the interviewing, right? So this is the part that most people botch. A lot of people actually over their career will generate an opportunity with a big tech company. They will end up getting one interview or one screening round. The number one thing that people fail in these rounds is the communication side of things. So in my case, I had three interviews, right? I had three back-to-back -back interviews. It was three hours long, even at the intern level. And they asked me medium to hard data structures and algorithms questions. It was about two mediums and then one hard at the end. Now, the number one way that you can pass these interviews is to practice like you play. What I mean by that is you need to simulate the interview environment as much as you possibly can. So if you know you're gonna be coding on a whiteboard, do all of your practice coding on a whiteboard. Literally buy a whiteboard, put it in your office or put it at your bedroom, whatever. And literally every question you do, practice writing it out. This is exactly what I did to prepare for my interviews. I had about 45 days when I scheduled mine to prep before I was flown out to uh, Washington. And for me to do that, again, I literally just bought the whiteboard, asked my mom or my dad or my friend, hey, can you just sit here and like pretend like you're my interviewer and I'm gonna, you know, do this practice question on the whiteboard. And that really put me in a state where when I was in the interview, I felt super comfortable. I already knew, okay, my handwriting's gonna be fine. I know how to write the code. I've practiced doing it like this. I've expelled my thought process countless times. So I know how to communicate. And the number one feedback I got from my interview was that I was likable, I wasn't awkward, and that I didn't seem nervous. That's the biggest thing, right? And to go with the nerves, the other piece of advice I like to give people, which is what I employed as well, is that when you walk into these interviews, just remember that you've done as much prep as you possibly can, if that's the case. In my case, it was. I really was prepping hard. I really wanted to take advantage of the opportunity. And that if you fail this interview, it's not your fault. What I mean by that is that if you've really emulated the environment, if you've really practiced like you're about to play here, if you put in a lot of work, if you've done all of this preparation, if you fail, there's nothing more that you could have done, right? You did the work, you prepped what you thought you needed to prep. And if you get unlucky, they ask you some crazy question. If you mess up, like it is what it is. You did what you could do. So just chill, relax, everything's gonna be fine. And I find when you go in with that mindset and you just calm yourself down and you realize like, it is what it is, life is gonna play out how it's gonna play out. You perform a lot better because you're a lot more relaxed, the nerves are chilled, and you can just be a more enjoyable person to be around, which also is a big thing these people are screening for. Anyways, long story short, I ended up passing all of those interviews, and then I received an offer a few days later from Microsoft when I had flown back to Ottawa. So now we're at the point that you guys all want to know about. How much money did I get paid by Microsoft? Okay, let me break it down for you here. Keep in mind that I am converting some of these figures to uh, Canadian dollars because that's where I was at the time, living in Canada. And I mean, that's the currency that was in my brain. Now, US dollars is not gonna sound as impressive, but it still is great. Okay, first offer letter is right here on screen. Now, this was in 2020. You can see the date here, February 5th, 2020. Uh, you know, at Microsoft, blah, blah, blah. Starting salary of 7,350 US dollars per month, paid twice per month or every two weeks. That at the time converted to about 10,600 or 10,500 Canadian dollars 
per month, which is a lot of money. That is about $120,000 per year, a little bit more in Canadian dollars, which is an insane salary to re be receiving at 19 years old when you have zero expenses and you're living with your parents or you're living in university campus. Paid holidays, software discounts, internship benefits. And I'm gonna go through a few other things that they offered as well, which was interesting. So by working there, they, I was gonna be relocating to Seattle, or relocating to Redmond, Washington, where the head base or home coders are. Now that didn't end up panning out because of some global health issue that we had going on at the time. I ended up working remotely from Canada, but this was the original plan before that was happening. I got this job right before the pandemic. So you could see all the things that you were gonna get as benefits, like a bus pass, access to a health club, right? medical, software discounts, visa assistance that will help you with all that stuff. Then they give you a relocation benefit. So if we go through here, you get $300 one time, and then you get the option of either flying to your internship where they will cover a round trip ticket for you in economy class or traveling by car. If you do that, I believe they pay you some certain amount. They expense you for like all of the hotels you had to pay for or whatever. Then they have the housing options, which was interesting. So you can either have housing arranged by Microsoft where they just arrange it. They do this internship housing thing for you. They pay for everything. Or you can just request a one time 7,000 US dollar payment to be given to you where you then arrange everything yourself, which is kind of a crazy amount to get for like three months, which is the typical internship duration. Then you have commute allowance, 1200 US dollars, right? If you just want to get the allowance or long-term rental, you pay 375 bucks a month out of your pay, which is really cheap for a long-term car rental and they arrange it for you. Tax gross ups, reimbursement of expenses, payback. There's a bunch of stuff, right? And they go through and that's the offer. All right, now that was offer one. I accepted this. And again, with all of my payments, I'm actually gonna go show you the pay slip right here. You can see that I received, this is in Canadian dollars, I believe, about $29,000 after some of the deductions. They withheld over 10K for taxes. I think I ended up having to pay even more than that actually. And we'll blur some of my name and personal information, which I just realized is there. Um, anyways, there's a reason it wasn't the full amount, but point is a lot of money. You can see I actually was paid this. That's why I'm showing you the amount. Now, what I wanna show you is what happened next. So essentially after this, they gave me another offer to return as an intern. And for that offer, they offered me a little bit more money. So this is now you can see in 2021. So this is the next year, essentially for the next internship round. And they were gonna be paying me 7,850 US dollars, which is a little bit more. The last one was 7,350. And then the main difference is they were gonna give me a $5,000 signing bonus just to encourage me to return. I ended up turning this down because at the time I was doing a bunch of other stuff that would conflict with this. And the reason I actually turned this down, or one of the main reasons, is they ended up changing this offer on me. They gave me this offer because I was supposed to go to Redmond. I was gonna do this in person now, you know, the second internship, you did the first one remote, we're gonna do it in person. Then they said, oh yeah, oh, you live in Canada. So because you live in Canada and the pandemic is still happening, we're not gonna be able to give you that same offer. So here's your new offer. And you can see this is a few days later. And it says, by the way, we're changing your location to be remote from Canada. And you're gonna work out of the Canadian office and take a look at the difference in salary. So from 7,850 US dollars, which is about $11,000 per month, they changed my pay to 5,300 Canadian. So less than half, 50, 48% of what I was gonna be getting before. They then changed my signing bonus, same thing, about half of what I was gonna get before, 3,500 Canadian. And then all the other stuff, you can see lump sum relocation, 4,900 bucks, all of this kind of stuff for the Canadian office. Crazy, that was a huge slap in the face, obviously. I get it, it's Canada, but like less than half the amount of pay um, was just insane and I ended up turning this down. And then I did also just ask them before I left, by the way, if you were gonna bring me on full time out of the US office, what would you pay? And they were saying the starting salary was anywhere around 100K, then they have stock vesting, signing bonus anywhere like 10 to like 15K for entry level, blah, 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 you get the idea. So there you go, that's the information I wanted to share with you. That's how much I got paid at Microsoft. Kind of a crazy story. Uh, there was all this stuff going on because of the pandemic. I mean, shout out to them. They did sort it out and they did give the offers. But I mean, to give me something that's 50% of what I had before, still a good offer. I'm not complaining, but wasn't something that made sense for me at the time. So I ended up rejecting it. Hope you guys found value from this video. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.